recreation room. We're going to deal with the recreation room, and I want to talk. To, I want to talk tonight about the responsibility of recreation. The responsibility of recreation. Amen. <clears throat> now, of course, the, the recreation room is a place of fun, praise, celebration, and joyous dancing. Praising him with tambourine, praising him with the cymbal, and praising him with the words of joyous praise. Worship, life, and joy. That's what we'll find in the recreation room. It is a place of exuberant praise. The, the, the recreation room in the Father's house, and of course, remember, we're dealing with the levels of intimacy, so, so the recreation room is a place to kind of really let your hair down and just go after God and give Him that show enough praise. And I don't think we, we really remember what our show enough praise was. I don't think right. you really remember that praise that you gave God, that you didn't care who was looking at you, you didn't care who was around you, you didn't care. All, all you knew is that you were finally at a place in God where you can enjoy yourself, where you can enjoy your life, and you had it was almost like the, the song used to say, I gotta praise that I gotta get it out. I gotta praise. And it's in the recreation room that this praise will come forth. And it's in the recreation room that this praise can be established because this is the room where you go to have fun. And I want to pause right there and tell you if your walk with Christ is boring, it's because you're boring. Come on here. Come on. Because your walk with Christ, your walk with salvation doesn't have to be boring. It's only boring because you're boring. All right now. Because there are ways to still have fun and be saved. You can still turn up and still maintain your Christian salvation. Amen. The world tends to make you think that there is no way for you to turn up without getting high, without getting drunk, without having sex, or whatever the case may be. But I want to argue that you can turn up and really still maintain your salvation. You can go out and watch movies. You can go out and go eating. You can go salsa dancing. Ain't no sin in that. You can go line dancing. Ain't no sin in that. You can actually go out and have a good time and not compromise what you believe. Right. So we're going to deal with the recreation room tonight because you can't be boring in the recreation room. Because the recreation room is a place where you can actually enjoy yourself. Let me deal with this. Uh, I want to read this text, Exodus 32 and 6. Once again, uh, tonight you don't have to stand for the reading of God's word, although that is our custom in the house. But I'm giving you some leeway tonight because we're in Bible study and we're going to study some things. And so Exodus chapter number 32 says this, starting at verse 6. So the next day they rose early and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat, to drink, and rose up to play. Okay. Rose up to play. Bible tells us these people were having a good time. I want, I want to dispel the myth that you cannot be saved and have a good time. Come on. I want to dispel that myth because it's not true. Because you can be saved and have an amazing time. Amen. You can be saved and have a wonderful time doing whatever it is that you're doing so long as what you're as if what you're doing does not compromise what you believe. Amen. 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 Bible says this in Ecclesiastes 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Watch this. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. I want to pause. I want to deal with that fourth verse. I want to deal with that fourth verse because I think this fourth verse is really going to help us tonight. There is a time to weep, but then there is also a time to laugh. If your life is full of weeping and mourning and you ain't laughing, you're in violation of the text. Watch this. There's also a time to mourn, which means, Mercedes, there's a time to cry. It's okay. There are times in your life where you're going to have to cry. Remember I taught the message. I don't know. I don't think I've taught it here yet. Michelle, you might remember. I taught a message entitled, When Tears Talk, God Responds. Okay. And I dealt with the fact that there is a chemical in your tears that when you cry out because of pain, 
your tears release a chemical that acts as a natural painkiller. Yes, That's why sometimes crying can make you feel better. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So the Bible is telling us there is a time for us to cry. But then it comes back and say, but there is also a time to dance. There is a time to, to do that right third. There is a time to get jiggy with it. There is a time There is a time to hit the folks. No, 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 there is a time to do all that. There is a time to jig. There is a time to whip and nay nay. There is a time for all of that. Because the Bible just said there is a time to dance. Yes, sir. So while we're in the recreation room, you have to understand that the recreation room is the place in the house where we can turn up. That that's the place in God where we can actually enjoy being in the house, where we can enjoy being in the presence of God. Hear me when I tell you, be, being a Christian is hard, but it's also very fun. It has its challenges. It does. It has its ups and downs, watch this, which means when it's time for me to praise God, I got to give it all I got because there are times where I can't get a praise out Yay! because I'm under so much pressure, I'm under so much weight, so I got to learn to take advantage of every moment I have to my best. Wow. I got to learn that there is a time, you know what, I done cried about this for three days. I think now is the time for me to go on and dance about it. Amen. Watch this. Let's deal with this. Let me, let me deal with the recreation room a little bit. Can I deal with that a little bit? Here's my three points I want to deal with tonight. I want to deal with the job of recreation. I want to deal with justified recess. And then I want to deal with a joyful reset. Okay? <clears throat> Here we go. Abandoned praise is not just for your times at church. Too many Christians only worship him in public places, but not in private places. Some of the most dramatic times of worship that we may have have happened in the secret place. What do you mean? Have you ever put a CD on for a few hours and just begin to praise God around your house? Have you ever been playing some music and you felt something creep in the room. Y'all not talking. Yes, yes, have, you, have you ever been listening to a song and, 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 and your feet got light? You, didn't, yeah. you, you weren't at church, but you just it, the song just came on and something just got light in you. And you just felt like, I, I could, yeah. and, and, you know, and you would say things like, oh, if I was at church, I would dance right now. But I want to argue why you can't dance where you are. Because if the church is in you, then you can dance right where you are. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, if we be if we be uh, uh, authentic and really deal with the text, you are in church all the time. You're just not in the building of church all the time, but you are the temple not made with hands. Y'all not talking to me. You are the church, which means your your place to dance is wherever you are. You're not watch this. You're not waiting to get to church in order for it to happen. You should make it happen because you are the church wherever you are. Right. That's good. Yeah. I, I have to tell people I'm not I, I'm not look I'm, I, I'm not I'm not looking for a party. I am a party. Amen. I'm a party waiting on a place to happen, which means, catch this, I'm not looking for an explosion, I'm looking for an implosion, which means I explode from the inside out, not from the outside in. If you mess with me, I'll dance in Walmart, if you're not talking. If you mess with me, I'll dance at the gas station, and my family know, if you mess with me, I'll get out at the stoplight. If I want to give it to him, I'm going to give it to him. There were times where we used to we used to be so excited about God, we'd have to get up from our desk and go to the bathroom real quick, shut that shut that stall door, and give him a good 15 seconds, and then walk out just like, like, like you know, like everything is cool. And, and, and people was like, where did you just go? I just had to go talk to God for a little bit. Don't even worry about it. You don't even understand. You don't even understand. I just had to go give God a little praise. Watch this. Uh, there were times where I had to turn my cubicle into my cave, but after I turned my cubicle into my cave, I had to transition it into a closet. There were times where I didn't have time to get up and go to the bathroom, so I had to create a praise break right where I was. I had to enjoy. I, the Bible says that the 
joy of the Lord is my strength. So there were times where I was weak. I had to find joy in the Lord. Y'all not talking. Yeah. The Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Watch this. David encouraged himself in the Lord before he asked God the request. Meaning, I had to fix my face before I requested in faith. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's right. That's good. That's right. David had to get his heart right. Get his spirit right. It is in the recreation room where I can get these things together. It is in the recreation room of the Father's house where we experience the, the, the explosion of praise, the explosion of worship. Some of us will spend all day in every room of the house but won't ever visit the recreation room when the recreation room is the room with no restriction. Come on. Come on now, man. The recreation room is the room where if you want to dance all night, you can dance all night. The soul says, when I think about Jesus and all he's done for me, when I think about Jesus and how he set me free, I can dance, dance, dance all night. Question, when did you really dance all night? Yeah. Yeah. When have you ever danced all night? Yeah. When, when have you ever danced half the night? Right, right. When have you ever danced a third of the night? Uh huh. Because according to your reaction, if the praise break is too long in church, you're ready to go. Yeah. So how are we singing a song? Make it plain. That we really don't live. Uh, it sounds good, but some of us mean I can dance, dance, dance for the next thirty seconds, and then after that, Pastor, after that, my the way the way my weight is set up, it, it won't it won't let me throw. I can't throw all of this around too many times because my bones ain't strong enough to handle the sheer force of my body moving in such rapid succession. Have you ever, have you ever praised God and be honest, you ever praise God and then realize it's, you need to sit down for a second? You ever dance, you, all right, y'all not going to talk to me. You ever dance and got dizzy? Come on. I mean, I mean, because in the moment you was going for broke, but, but after the glory came down and, 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 and reality hit in, your whole body was like, we going to talk when we get home. Cause, 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 cause you don't, you don't, you don't even move like this on a regular, on a regular basis. Man. Can you listen, listen, listen? Many of us don't understand. No, we don't, we don't really understand. Praise takes a lot, especially if you, if you, if you don't work on your cardio, you don't work on your stamina, you don't work on your endurance. You be like, God, I'm gonna go hard for a minute. <laughs> So whatever, whatever you need to get out of me, Lord, I need you to get it out in that minute. Cause right after a minute, these heels gonna start hurting, these shoes gonna start hurting, my knees gonna start acting funny, my thighs gonna start burning, I got sweat dripping down my face, my track feel like it's slipping, and you talking about give me a show enough praise? I'm trying to make sure I don't have a show enough heart attack. Come on, come on. But this is why. This is why. Because we perform at church uh -huh. a praise that we have not practiced at home. Right. Speak this. Right. Speak that. Right. So we don't even live this at home, but we try to practice it at church. Yes, sir. Right, You're right, sir. Here's the problem with trying to practice it at church. The truth. Come on. Yeah. When you try to practice it at church, we end up seeing the manifestations of the discipline you have at home. Because if it takes, if a 30 second praise in church kills you, that lets me know you don't have no type of praise at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's true. Yeah. I know we may not want to admit it, but Walk it's it out. true. Walk it out. Let's deal with the recreation room. Here's the responsibility of recreation. All right. Let's deal with this. Deal with this room. Here we go. First, we have to understand what a recreation room. The recreation room in any particular home is used for a variety of purposes, 
such as parties, games, and other everyday casual use. The term is common in the United States, but is less common in the United Kingdom because in the United Kingdom they'd rather call it a game room instead of a recreation room. Yes. The recreation rooms can vary in themes and styles, but generally have a basic setup. Let me give you some of the basic setups. Number one, the the, the general the, the recreation room had is a room of entertainment. Yes, it okay. is. Okay. They're, they're normally centered on some form of entertainment, uh, typically uh, like a movie setup, like like it's a theater style, watch this. And so it creates an intimate moment for you to go and watch movies. And, and the recreation room is, is gen generally set up around, watch this, audio and video, meaning it's generally set up for your perception and your hearing. Yes, sir. Okay? So being in the recreation room, being in the room... Being in the recreation room in, in God's house, meaning meaning there is a setup in the room that has the most freedom, but it's going to deal. It, it's it's catered toward your 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 perception and your hearing. Okay. Amen. Right. Some of us some of us find joy in knowing that we hear from God. Yeah. Uh -huh. Some of us find joy in knowing that we are able to see what God is trying to say. Amen. Catch this though, it doesn't mean you like what you hear and you like what you see, but you take joy in the fact that there was a time where you couldn't hear or see. Right. Amen. Many of us who, who are able to hear from God now, it's a big deal for us because we remember a time where we couldn't hear him say nothing. Right. We remember a time where we didn't really know what God was saying. Well, we were just praying and praying and praying and weren't getting no answers because everybody taught us to pray. Nobody taught us how to be quiet and listen. Amen. Nobody told us how to say, uh, 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 say what we heard until we saw what we said. I'll say it again. No one taught us how to say what we heard until we saw what we said. No one told us how to speak faith until faith produced reality. Yeah. Talk, sir. Because you can speak at a point of faith that will cause faith to pull the invisible into the visible. That's right. And if your Bible, the Bible says, watch this, I'm going to give you all this for free because this is Bible. The Bible doesn't say Mercedes, with that obedience, it's impossible to please God. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible does not say, without religion, it's impossible to please God. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say, without your praise, it's impossible to please God. That's not what the Bible says. But what the Bible says is, without faith, it is impossible to please God. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for or the evidence of things not seen. So what he's saying is, without your ability to hope for something and believe in what you can't see, you can't please me because you will never see me because I am spirit, not flesh. You can see you can see uh, you can see characteristics of me, but you will never see me. So without believing in your ability to see me, meaning you will never please me. That's good. He says, just because you can't see me, don't mean I don't exist. Right. And people often ask the question, if you can't see God. How can you believe him? I said, you can't see the wind, but you believe it. If it comes at 120 miles an hour, oh, you'll believe in it. You can't see your thoughts, but you know they there. So explain to me how you're going to question, how can I believe in a God whom I can't see, but you believe, watch this, you believe in bacteria that you can't see. Come on. You don't see them. Well, you can see germs when they when they cause reactions. So can God. Right. Because right. right. listen, yeah. you can debate my belief. You can't debate the reaction. Right. Talk that. So you can tell me God ain't real. You can't tell me He didn't change my heart. Right. And people say, well, that wasn't God. That was of your own free will. Well, explain to me where my free will came from. Because I don't know about any of y'all in here, but I promise I didn't evolve from a monkey. Right. I was created in 
the image of my father, not in evolution of a chimp. Because I want to argue then, if we all evolved from monkeys, then explain to me why we still got monkeys. Come on. Explain to me who picks and chooses when the monkeys evolve into humans, and who picks and chooses that the monkeys stay monkeys. Talk to her. That's good, Brittany. And so, and so I have to understand that when I'm in, I'm, I'm still in the text, I got to understand that when I'm in the recreation room of God, this is the room where I get to exhaust all of the praise that I've been holding in. This is the, this is the room where I get to enjoy, hear me, I get to finally enjoy my salvation. Right, right, right. The joy of my salvation. My Lord. Why is it that we have trouble enjoying our salvation? It's amazing to me. Am I helping? Yes, sir. It's amazing to me how we can't enjoy our salvation when the Bible says clearly in John 10 and 10. Although the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, I come that they may have life. And have it more abundantly. He says, I come so that the life that you have, you can have in excess. Meaning, catch this, if you are not living life or enjoying life, then you're not really fulfilling the reason that I came. Right. Come on, that's good. I, I, I just want to argue, I don't believe God came, went through all that death, to die for us, to resurrect for us, for us to be boring. Right. Amen. And, 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 and the problem I have is religious people want to make your life boring because they say in order for you to really be a Christian, you can't live a life. I want to argue, if that's the case, then let's, if you want to say we can't deal with carnal stuff, that means you better not ever eat out at a restaurant. That means you better not ever go to a movie. That means you, that means you need to walk. You don't need the car because cars wasn't in the Bible. If, we, if you go hold people to religion like that, then why are you not still sacrificing the fatty calf? Why, why ain't you doing the trespass offering and the sin offering and the grain offering? Why ain't you going to the tabernacle so they can atone for your sins if you're going to hold us to Old Testament religion? Come on. Come on, Dad. You have Because you want to keep us bound by what convicts you. Let me pause and help you understand what convicts you may not convict me. Right. Talk to you may get convicted because you watch rated R movies. They don't convict me. Hell. I can watch it. You may not like horror movies because you got this thing where you say, I don't want them demons in my house. Ah! I want to argue and say, I don't run from demons. Demons run from me. So I can watch a movie and not fear them. You know what I'm saying? I don't fear them. Because number one, I know it's Hollywood. Right. So I don't fear them now. There are things, watch this, that even though I don't fear, I respect. Like my kids will never be allowed to use a Ouija board in my house. Right. Amen. 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 See, I know the difference between Hollywood and reality. Right. Hollywood doesn't bother me. Reality does. Right. And I don't fear reality, but I respect it. Right. Because here's the thing. Even though I'm not afraid of it, I still have to have a respect for it. Amen. I, I'm not afraid of cars, but I am afraid of a two-ton machine going 60 miles an hour crashing into me. Right. Amen. So while I, I don't fear the car, I fear what it's capable of. Y'all talking. I fear what it's capable of. Right. And when I fear what it's capable of, I develop a respect for it, even though I don't fear it. Yeah. Okay. Right. The entertainment room is, is one of the setups. Number one, there's a seating arrangement. Yes, most sir. entertainment room, most entertainment rooms have seating setups, which means this is the place for us to come once again, and it is like a miniature version of the living room. Mm -hmm. Except in this room, the, the, the atmosphere is a little bit more casual, not as formal. It, it, you can take your shoes off. Can, you know, you know, you know, technically you're supposed to take your shoes off in the living room. 
Okay? My Lord. That if, if we really if we teach deep etiquette, you don't take your shoes off in the living room. Because the living room is a place, uh, it's more it's more of a formal place of communication. It's kind of hard talking to people when they're taking off their shoes and if they feet sink, it disrupts the whole conversation. <laughs> But but when you are but but when you are when you are in the recreation room, it is a place to kind of let your hair down, be casual. Watch this in the recre in the recreation room, you can be a little bit more naked. And what I don't mean that physically, I mean even in, in your conversation, even in how you interact with people, you can be a little bit more naked because it is here that we that we usually talk about everything, you know, where anything and everything goes in the recreation room because nobody feels the, the, the feeling of formality. Everybody's just kind of relaxed and casual because it's known as the game room. So in here is where the games can be played. In here is where we can play Uno and Skip Bow and Phase 10 and Cards and Battle of the Sexes and Monopoly and Checkers and Shoots and Ladders. It is in here that we can play one of the all-time favorite games of Candyland. It is in here that we can play those games when we go to Gumdrop Mountain. It is here that we can play the game of uh, 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 Spades, when we can play Gin, when we can play uh, Rummy, when we can play Bridge. Yeah. It is here that we can play Go Fish. You know, it, it, it is here, it is here because this is the game room, this is the entertainment room. Watch this. This room is not made to be formal. Amen. It's made for relaxation. Okay? Check this out. It's entertainment city, then they have games. Games challenge your thinking contrary to what you believe. While games are fun, games actually challenge your brain power. Because you have to constantly solve puzzles. You have to constantly outthink your opponent. You have to constantly play defense as well as offense. If you play in dominoes and you try to score on every turn, it's a safe bet you ain't a good domino player. Because money ain't good money. Exactly. Because when you play dominoes, you know I'm going to let this five pass because I know they got big five in their hands. So when they come back around, I can hit 20. When you learn how to work the board, you understand I don't have to play my money every time. Because sometimes you can play too much money and let them know what's in your hand. Right. See, when, you, when you're a real good domino player, watch this. It is, it, it, is play, it is in playing the game that you begin to unlock the strategies on how to understand your opponent. Because you watch how your opponent plays. And if you really want to be honest, a real person who knows how to study their opponents never plays at their full strength the first time. Amen. Because you got to let your opponents reveal their strengths and reveal their weaknesses. So you got to study your opponent. Come on now, Dad. Okay? We talked about the Mayweather and, and the Conor McGregor fight, and what we found in the fight is they said the first four rounds, Floyd gave away because he was studying. Right. Yeah. So he wasn't even trying to win. He, was, he, he, he spent the first four rounds studying his opponent. Let, let me see, let me see, does he always lead with the left or does he always lead with the right? Uh, uh, is he real aggressive or does he play, does he kind of play uh, uh, to, his, to his strengths or to his weaknesses? And so Floyd says, I'm going to make him play my game, which means I'm going to make him come to me so I can study how he flows. So watch this. So all the time while Connor is giving up his strategy, Floyd is already developing a counterattack to say, right, right. you can take the first four rounds, but we got 12 to go, which means the last eight belong to me. Right. Right. And, and when you know you have the ability to win all 12, giving up four ain't no problem. Right. Yeah. Because watch this, I can give it up when I know you can't knock me out. Right. So I'll let you throw your weight around, I'll let you swing, I'll let you exhaust yourself, and I'll just kind of play with you to see, okay, all right, are you good with the guard, are you good with defense, are you good with the rope dope? okay, you really can't handle that? Cool, so I know I can hit you whenever I feel like it, so let's just play defense first. Right. Because it is here that in the recreation room where while you are praising, you are receiving strength. Because I'm trying to get us to understand, praise does not change the problem, it changes our perception of the problem. Right. Right. Let me help you. We don't give God praise because we want God to change the situation. Come on. We give God praise because we need God to change us in the situation. Right. So when I'm dancing, I, I, yes, I want God to do it, but more than anything, I need God to help me deal with it. Right, 
So this praise begins to change. All right, they say, they say, they used to say you got to get rid of stinking thinking because stinking thinking determines how you see a thing. Because if you change your mentality concerning the thing, the thing may not change. All right, let me help you. You, you. you may open your eyes and finally see somebody for who they are, and it doesn't change them. It just changes how you interact with them. Right, right, right. 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 So, so remember, I told you, trust is complete confidence in one's ability to do a thing. So if somebody asks you, do you trust everybody, you should say yes. Reason being is because it, th there are levels to trust, which means if I know you're a liar, Danielle, I trust you to lie. So yeah, I trust you. Right. I know you're a liar, so I know you're going to lie. Which right. means I have to trust you to lie, but then I also have to trust myself not to tell you anything trustworthy. Right. right. So, I'm not mad at you, I'm not going to mistreat you, I'm not going to dog you out. I just know how to trust you now. See, the problem is, y'all try not to trust people when you should learn how to trust them. You should learn how to trust them because now you have complete confidence in their ability to do something. You know what? Every time I'm around you, you messy. So now, I trust you to be messy. So, which means, if I allow myself to get entangled with a messy person, then that's my fault, not yours, because I knew you were messy before I dealt with you. So I begin to learn how to interact with you. Does that make sense? Okay. After this, after after entertainment, seating, and games, they also uh, have a lot of food and drink. Okay. Okay. Once again, this is this is see the recreation room kind of encapsulizes all the rooms just on a smaller scale. Because most recreation rooms, there's a bathroom around the corner, so you got the bathroom. They have the living room function. So we can all sit around and fellowship. It's just on a casual level. They have they have the food and drink, which means they have the dining room, but it's just not as formal. Make it sense? Because in the dining room, you eat at the table. In the game room, you eat on those little TV trays, or you eat in your lap. Okay? Watch this. It makes, it, the, the recreation room kind of makes everything a little bit more intimate, but casual at the same time. Am I making sense? So when we deal with praise, we got to deal, watch this, that, that we got to deal with this, and let me give y'all this, this is going to be good. Humans spend their time in activities, in the activities of daily living, sleep, social duties, and leisure. A lot of time being free from prior commitments to psychological and social needs, a prerequisite of recreation. Leisure has increased with increased longevity and for many, decreased hours spent for physical and economic survival. Yet others argue that time pressure has increased for modern people as they are committed to too many tasks. Here's what the text is saying. Here's what this is saying. Many of us have taken on way too many tasks and now recreation has become a necessity, not just an option. The enemy tries to destroy you with a spirit of busy. Let me help you. Some of us get so busy with our lives that our chief complaint now ain't that we busy. Our chief complaint becomes, I have no time for myself. And the problem with that is, is how are you able to take care of everything and not the person that needs to be taken care of? I want to pause and give you some instructions tonight, and those of you who trust me will follow my instructions, and that is simply this. You need to schedule some time for you. Not your kids, not your job, not your spouse. Schedule some time for you. Do me a favor and tell somebody, can I please have some me time? Can I please have some me time? Having that me time is important. Having the me time, hear me. Y'all come on back, come on back. Having that me time is important. Because if you are a pitcher of water, y'all talking, listen. If you are an answer to other people, what do you do when you run out of answers? Right. If, if I empty this jar, who fills it back up? Oftentimes, many of us, me, I'm guilty, spend so much time giving everything to everybody, committing to everything to everybody, and we don't take time for ourselves and got the nerve to complain because everybody keeps pulling on us when people will do 
what you allow them to do, but they will, they will respect what you make them do. Come on. Come on. Get in the house, sir. Come on, here. As long, Keisha, as long as the sign over your life says open, you don't get to act closed. Oh, wow. Doesn't it frustrate you when you go to a restaurant late and the sign on the door say midnight, but they lock the doors at 11.30? Right. Come on. And you think to yourself, this your sign says y'all close at midnight. Right. Now, I ain't the best mathematician, but I know that 11.30 ain't midnight. Come on. And now you are frustrated because you wanted something from the store, uh -huh. but watch this. Regardless of how frustrated you are, you got to go somewhere else. Right. Right. And I want to argue, many of, you are, many of you keep trying to take on customers that you don't have enough room or energy to take on. And you blame them because they won't stop coming to the store when you got to blame yourself because you won't lock the door. Right. Right. You have to blame yourself because you won't turn the lights off. You keep the open sign open all the time and people ain't just going to say, well, maybe, like, you don't ever go to McDonald's and think, well, maybe they're having a rough day because there's a lot of cars outside, so I think I should eat somewhere else. No, you say if the sign is open, they got to serve me. It ain't my fault they had a bad day. You don't even, you don't even watch this. You don't even care what happened before you got there. All you care about is, y'all not talking to me, and all you care about is that they give you what you asked for. So if you feel like that at a restaurant, how are people supposed to feel like that when you have a sign that says you open all the time? Don't get mad because they're not considerate. Because you're always open. Because that's what your sign says. God, I wish people would stop asking me for stuff. We wish you would turn your sign off and stop saying yes. Talk to me. Have, have, you ever, have you ever went to a restaurant and watched them lock the door and they saw you walking up and then they told you? And you know what you did? You looked at the sign. Let me tell you, I know exactly what you did. You looked at the sign, then you looked at them and tried to tell them they closed at 12, and you know what they did? Took that key and walked off. Watch this. They, 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 they didn't care what you thought. They didn't care who you were. All they knew was that at this point, I've made a decision to close this store. You're going to either like it, or you don't. But either way, you ain't getting in. Here's the issue. You let people come in and out of your store. You get mad when they don't respect the fact that you got a long line around the corner. But you the one with the door still open. So which means, as long as the door is open, what you're telling me is that you're open for business. Watch this. Even if you forget to lock the door because you've already destroyed everything, if I walk in your store, you got to recook something and serve me. Because it's not my fault you didn't lock the door. Right. And here is, here is why when you're in the recreation room, you don't understand that people come in this room and they take advantage of the fact that the recreation room is the most open and casual room. But even in the recreation room, there still has to be room. Some of us some of us don't have anything to give people, yet we let them come in and out of our store. There is nothing worse, Emmanuel, than going into a store that ain't got nothing on the shelf. Right. And, and, and Jay, we're trying to figure out why ain't nothing on the shelf. Because everybody has come in and already taken everything, and instead of them being smart enough to close, they stay open. Right. All right, Pastor, make it plain. I'm glad you asked. Make it a little bit more volume. I'm glad you asked. Here, here, we, here we go. Here we go. People have been taking everything from you, and you realize you ain't got nothing. And when you realize you don't got nothing, you don't close the store. You stay open. And here's the problem. You can't let every Sally Sob story make you reopen your store. If you go to a locked store, they don't care that you ain't ate all day. That ain't their problem. That's your problem. You chose to go all day without eating. You passed up a thousand restaurants to come here. It ain't my fault you ain't ate. Right. Get off. Get off. 
And you know what they do? They lock the door and don't care. They don't care nothing about you starving. They lock the door. They don't care. But in our life, Shay, in our life, here's the problem. We lock the door. They give us a sad, a sad story. We open the door. They come in and eat and leave and won't even pay. So now we are inconvenienced. We are, we, we are taking advantage of all because you let somebody's sad story make you open the door that, watch this, God keeps telling you to close. And the problem is, here, here it is, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I'm going to speak to your heart. Here's why you keep struggling. You keep struggling, Mercedes, because you keep giving from what's in the store and not from the overflow. Wow, that's good. So, so you can't make a cake because you keep giving everybody your eggs. So now when it comes time for you to make a cake, you don't have that ingredient you need yeah. to make the cake. Yeah. And now, watch this, you got everything else you need to make the cake, but because you gave all of your eggs away, now you got to go struggle and find eggs. And you got everything you need, but you keep giving away vital ingredients. Right. Vital. Make a picture.